Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special year. I will thank you for every child of God here tonight. I will pray, O oh Lord, you make everyone special, unique, extraordinary in Jesus' name. Now our door is open. It will be a year for breakthrough. A year for signs and wonders. A year for the extraordinary in every life in Jesus' name. You will wipe all tears away. All sorrows are gone in Jesus' name. I pray tonight, everyone here, you will touch. Everyone here, you will heal. Everyone here, you will deliver. Everyone here, you provide for. I pray you set every captive free in Jesus' name. And all our people, everywhere, south, north, middle belt, anywhere anyone is now, hearing the sound of my voice, I pray, Lord, that moment of the breakthrough will come for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we're standing here today on the threshold of victory. I will pray, O oh Lord, this year, nobody will cry. This year, nobody will have a loss. Great, 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 mighty things you do for everyone in Jesus' name. As we hear your word now, your word will come in and faith will be born in every heart. And when it comes to time to pray, Lord, we pray the heavens will be opened. And all prayers are going to be answered. Signs and wonders tonight. Miracles tonight. Deliverances tonight. Healings tonight. Provision tonight. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. I read from verse 9. Then I read from verse 11. Then I'll go back again and read from verse 9. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 33. And you saw said, I have enough. And you saw said, I have enough. Come to verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. Do you see this in verse 9? Esau said, I have enough. Jacob said in verse 11, I have enough. I'm going to read everything now from verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. In verse 10, And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my presence at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Take, here is Jacob speaking, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought unto thee, because God has dealt graciously, wonderfully, abundantly with me. And because, and because, and because I have enough, and he urged him, and he took it. Tonight, we're talking about possessing enough for the present and for the future. And I look at you and I say, praise the Lord you are here tonight. Because from today, sufficiency, abundance, provision, all the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Possessing enough. For the present and for the future. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4. And I read from verse 18. And then I jump down to verse 19. Every promise we read about tonight is yours. And you're going to claim them and the faithful God of heaven. 
is going to fulfill them in your life in Jesus name in Philippians chapter 4 verse 18 but I have all and abound I am full here is Paul the apostle speaking who apart from Esau We've heard from Jacob, and now we're hearing from Paul, and very soon we're going to hear from you. Yeah. I have all and abound. I am full. Look at verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. On every side, the Lord is going to pour his blessing upon you. This year is a year of abundance. It's a year of provision. And it's a year of sufficiency. It's a year of answered prayer in your life this year. You look to the right, you look to the left, you look in front, you look back. Everything around you will be fullness and abundance in Jesus' name. In First Kings chapter 5. And there I read from verse 4. First Kings chapter 5 verse 4. It says, But now the Lord my God god has given me rest on every side that tells your story this year every side you go out you'll be full you come in you are going to be full in your office in the market you are going to be full when you travel you are going to be full anywhere you find yourself as the lord is leading you this year on every side there's going to be the fullness and the abundance of the lord in your life in jesus name but now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurring, neither enemy nor a foe. Nothing will harm you this year in Jesus' name. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 7. The Lord has given us his promise, the assurance this year. That this year will be your year. The year of answered prayer. The year of fulfillment. The year of power. The year of protection. And everything around you this year will be so well. And tell you about the abundance of the Lord in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all thy works. All the works of your hand, this is a year of blessing. There will be no farming, there will be no barrenness, there will be no dryness in the land. Because this year, the favor of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God will be upon your life. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy, thy walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God has been with thee. It will be with you. Amen. Thou hast lacked nothing. You will not lack anything in Jesus' name. Possessing in all for the present and for the future. I'm coming back to this Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 9. Once again, we're listening to this man that said, I have enough. His name is Esau. And Esau said, I have enough. My brother, keep that thou hast unto thyself. You see, it was unfortunate for Esau because here comes Jacob. The Lord had blessed Jacob on every side. The promises of God had been yes and amen in the life of Jacob. He had enough and to spare. And now came to his brother and said, let's forget the past. And I come to you tonight and I say, let us forget the past. I said, let us forget the past. You see, between Jacob and Esau, they had hurt one another. And you know the story between Jacob and Esau. And Esau had been saying, I'm going to get him. I'm going to retaliate. And Jacob said, let's forget that. The past is gone. Now we have the future ahead of us. Well, everything I have, I'm going to give you this. And you said, no, no, don't give me anything. I have enough. And then look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my presence at my hand. And it says, For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. 
and thou was pleased with me. He was saying, the Lord has preserved my life. I heard you wanted to kill me because that's what Esau said he was going to do. But the Lord protected that Jacob, he will protect you. He preserved Jacob, he will preserve your life. And now, the preservation of God upon Jacob, upon the members of his family, upon all his inheritance, everything he had, we can see that. And he said, I saw God. I saw the face of God. I said, I will not let you go except to bless me. And in the previous chapter that I saw the face of God and that angel, and now I'm seeing you, and I'm still seeing the face of God and the hand of, of God, therefore receive at my hand. I'm going to talk about Dada's preservation. Number three now is what we read in verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God has dealt graciously with me he said you know what Esau we've been separated for many years now but every day of our absence every week when we're absent I've seen God he has dealt graciously with me and we're transferring that same blessing of Jacob upon you today that every day of your life from now till you see him face to face he will deal graciously with you and that's why Jacob now said those words you used I am the word, one that you use those words saying I have enough and I want to declare to you that nobody is going to hinder your blessing this year and you're going to have enough in Jesus name that's what I call prosperity and sufficiency. Let's come back to number one. Number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. That's Esau. The profession of satisfaction. He said, I'm all right. He wasn't all right. I have enough. He didn't have enough. And Jacob wanted to be a blessing. He said, no, no. I don't need it. Of course, Esau, you need it. And you need your destiny to be changed. You need everything to be turned around in your life. But yeah, he was having profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Number two, the preservation of saints. I'm coming to Jacob now. I said I'm coming to Jacob now. The Lord changed his name. He will change your name. It changes nature. It will change your nature. It changes destiny. It will change his destiny. All the enemies of Jacob became his friends. All your enemies will become your friends in Jesus' name internally god will change you in your family god will change you the situation of god will change everything in your place of what god will change everything that you you will not even recognize yourself anymore because you are poor now you are going to be rich you are sorrowful now you are going to be happy you are crying now this year is a year of laughter you are barren but now you are fertile and you are productive in jesus name you are a failure, but now you are a success. You are lonely, but now you are a man or a woman of fellowship. Because God is changing everything about you from today for this year. In Jesus' name. The preservation of saints through divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life. And it is starting tonight. By the time you get home, if there are people that didn't come to the service tonight, when they see, they'll not recognize you anymore. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. The preservation of sin through divine intervention. Number three, prosperity and sufficiency. Huh, you are coming there. I said you are coming there. Prosperity and sufficiency with divine investments or divine investments you will make an investment in the kingdom of god and god will make investment in your life in jesus name number one let me run through this number one but i don't want to stay too long with esau because this year esau will not be my friend Esau will not be my companion. We will not live in the same house together. We will not walk on the same way together. I'm going to be on the side of Jacob. Where is Jacob? I said, where is Jacob? We will be together in Jesus' name. But you know, I still have to talk to you about Esau a little bit. Number one, number one, the profession of satisfaction without divine inheritance. Look at that in Genesis chapter 33. Genesis 3 and in verse 9 And Esau said I have enough my brother Keep that thou hast Unto thyself and That's what is called contentment He said I'm alright I'm content 
I'm satisfied. I'm saying, Jacob, you lost the birthright. I'm all right. You lost the blessing of Isaac. I'm all right. Divine inheritance is not yours. I'm all right. You know the people that say they're all right. They're all right without salvation. They're all right without the new birth. They're all right without the names in the book of life. They're all right without the joy of the... They're all right without eternal life. They're all right without the protection of the almighty God. They're all right without the ministration of angels. They're all right without a miracle. You will not be all right until a miracle takes place in your life. And this night, you're, now you'll really be all right. I said you'll be all right tonight in Jesus' name. When the miracle hand of God touches it, and that's there, you'll be all right. When your healing comes tonight, it is there, you will be all right. When God takes the one limitation lack away from your life tonight, then you'll be all right. When God takes away that incurable disease, it's only there, you'll be all right. When the hand of Jacob comes upon you, when the hand of Jesus comes upon you, and then he shovels to you, and then parts across to you, across to you, all the blessings of heaven, it is there, you'll be all right. But if you don't have Jesus, tell me what's your joy if you don't have salvation tell me what's your joy if you've lost the birthright tell me what's your joy if you have not born again tell me what's your joy if your name is not in the book of life tell me what's your joy if angels are not serving you like they serve the people of god tell me what's your joy if you don't have a bank account in heaven tell me what's your joy if the promises of god are not yours tell me what's your joy but when you come tonight and say i know i'm not all right I need Jesus in my heart. I need forgiveness in my life. I need the salvation in my life. Then you'll be all right in Jesus' name. But you know, look at Esau. Esau said, I am all right. Hey, don't say that. Let Jacob tell you, I met angels of God. There was a ladder that connected heaven to earth. Let me tell you the story. Don't say you're all right. And then the Lord blessed me. I've been to Laban. And then every day God has been gracious. And I want to pass that grace grace unto you. I want to pass that mercy unto you. That I've, I've seen miracle. I've got wife. I've got children. I've seen miracle. I've seen the angels, the host of God. And they followed after me. Let me introduce you to them. Only then will you be alright. And then I saw God face to face and my life is preserved. And I wrestled with that angel at night. Let me introduce you to warfare, spiritual warfare. And have victory. Then you'll be alright. But he also said, no, don't tell me anything. I'm alright. I pray you'll not be like that in Jesus' name. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 12. This man who said, I'm all right. Satisfaction without divine inheritance. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm reading there from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator. I will not be a fornicator. Of no profane person. I will not be a profane person as Esau. I will not be like Esau this year. I said I will not be like Esau this year. You know, when somebody invites you into the blessing, I'm all right. Somebody invites you to a church like this, I'm all right. And somebody invites you to come into the blessing of the Almighty, the abundance of the blessings of God upon your life. And he says, come on, I'm going to shower days upon because Jesus Christ said, the seed cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have that life in abundance. No, I'm all right. That's like Esau. I will not be like Esau. But you come to the Lord and I say, Oh Lord, I want I don't want to be like Esau. I want to have divine inheritance, divine impartation, divine inspiration, divine revelation. I want to have everything that heaven has for me this year. It's only then when I get heaven in my soul and when I get all the blessings of God in my life, and then I will be all right. This year I'll be all right in Jesus' name. How about you? How about you? This year you'll be all right in Jesus' name name in your house in the night you'll be all right on the street you'll be all right in your office you'll be all right all those enemies that have been chasing you in the past this year they'll not be able to come near you in jesus name all your sorrows taken all your tears wiped away it is this year with divine intervention in your life and divine inheritance in your life then you'll be all right this year in jesus name you know premature death will not come to your family this year your children will not die your husband will not die your wife will not die everything you touch will turn to life in jesus name 
I told you that middle of this year, remind me, middle of this year, we're going to have celebration. I said we're going to have celebration. Then you'll come, then you'll come, then you'll say, Pastor, I was there that power night, I am all right. I was there that power night, I've got my job. I was there that power night, I've got a wife. I've got, I was there that power night, I've got an husband. I've got, I was there that power night, I've got eternal inheritance. I was there that power night, now I am all right. You'll be all right in Jesus' name. Look at this. That will not be like Esau, who for one morsel of bread sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Look at the man that said, I'm all right. I have enough. He was rejected. And he didn't come into the blessing. Then it says, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with Tears, he sought it in, then he gave up. You, you know, many people that's why he said, I have enough. He said, Maybe that's all right for me, maybe that's my destiny, maybe I'm not supposed to have it, maybe it is not my luck this year. The provision of God will be yours, and you'll not sit back and say, Maybe I'm not supposed to have it. Of course, you're supposed to have it. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord has called you into blessing, you are going to enter into that blessing this year in jesus name let me come now to number two this well I, I want to talk i want to talk about this man his name is jacob i said his name is jacob and then his name was changed from jacob to tell me israel the lord will change everything about you and anything negative will become positive in jesus name everything that is upside down god will put it right side up in jesus name uh, let, let's look at the man in Genesis chapter 33 Genesis chapter 33 Genesis chapter 33 and we're reading from verse 10 from verse 10 it says and Jacob said and Jacob said and Jacob said this year you open your mouth and you proclaim your own blessing you open your mouth and you declare the promise of God upon your life and Jacob said look at what he said he said nay I pray thee if now I have found grace in thy sight he said now everywhere I've been going since I left many years ago I met Laban I found grace and then I got to the well, I found grace. And then I came out of that place and Laban ran after me. He wanted to hurt me, but God said, don't touch that man. He is my child. I found grace. And since I've been from step to step and day after day, I've been finding grace. And the Lord is saying that this year, anywhere you go, you'll find grace. You'll find mercy. Before you get there, those closed doors will be open to you in Jesus' name. And so he said, I have found grace in thy sight. You'll find grace in the sight of all your enemies. The people that said, come what me, I'm going to take on that man. I'm going to take on that woman. I'm going to cut him off. When you get to them, they'll not be able to do it. You'll find grace and mercy and happiness and joy in their sight in Jesus' name. He said, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Can I tell you the antecedent of that? The background of that. How is it that this man of God was preserved? Was protected. And Esau coming with 400 men could not touch him. Can I show you? It's because of divine intervention. Divine intervention. Look at Genesis chapter 32. I read from verse 1. And Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. Satan will not meet you this year. Evil spirits will not meet you this year. All those occultic powers, they will not meet you this year. Anywhere you go, hey, this, is how, this is how this man Jacob became preserved, became protected. Because in the previous chapter, while he left the house of Laban and was going like this, before he got to Esau, before he saw his enemy, he saw the angels of God. When you see God, before you see the enemy, your enemy is paralyzed. When the angels of God meet you, before you ever see your enemies, all those enemies are paralyzed. When, they, when these agents of God from heaven, and this ministers of God from heaven, when they see you, before you ever see anything negative, all those negative things are neutralized in Jesus' name. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the name of that place 
Mahanaim. And then it says, Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Let's jump down to verse 6. In verse 6, and the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he came to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. He wanted to finish Jacob. Nobody will be able to finish you. No matter how many people they gather together, all those people conspirators against your life and against your destiny, God will scatter them in Jesus' name. And they were told in verse 7, in verse 7, and then Jacob was greatly afraid. Don't be afraid this year. I said, Fear not this year. This is your year. It is deeper life year. A year of joy. A year of laughter. A year of mercy. A year of grace. A year of answered prayer. A year of signs and wonders. A year of doing exploits. If you have never seen a miracle before, get ready today. Miracle is coming your way. Because tonight's power night is the night that opens the door into the abundance of the Lord for the rest of the year in Jesus' name. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into the into two bands. And then look at verse 24 and see what he began to do. He began business with God. We have business with God tonight. I said we have business with God tonight. I will not let you go except you bless me. I will not let you go except you bless me. Tonight must be your night. Because it says from the days of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffered violence. And the. And the. And the. And the violent take it by force. Jacob said tonight I'm going to have it. And you are saying tonight I am going to have it. My breakthrough is tonight. My healing is tonight. My miracle is tonight. My deliverance is tonight. I'm go not going to let you go except you bless me. You know, some people say, when God wants, then God will do it. Oh no, oh no, because uh, from the days of John the Baptist until tonight, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You're going to have it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, and Jacob was left alone. And there result a man was him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. Let me go for the day breaketh. Well, the miracle has not happened yet, and the angel said, Let me go. Will you let him go? The, 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 the miracle has not occurred and the provision has not come and the way the door has not been opened and then the angel said let me go and Jacob said you go look at what he said we're looking at that in verse 26 and he said I will not let thee go I will not let thee go and that man determined the day of his blessing that man determined the time of his blessing. The angel would have gone. But this man prevailed over the angel. You will prevail. When you prevail in prayer, you are prevailed over your enemy. When you prevailed in prayer, you are prevailed over all negative circumstances in your life. When you prevail in prayer, you are prevailed over all those circumstances walking in your life. He said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, promotion. I said promotion. As a priest, before he got to prayer, he was just like ordinary, he was just Jacob. But now he was Israel. A change had come. Before you came, how did you come? Sorrowful? Sad? Me? Look at my condition. Before you live here tonight, the joy of the Lord. Miracles bring joy. Healings bring joy. Deliverances bring joy. Answer prayer brings joy. Testimony brings joy. You are taking one home tonight in Jesus' name. As a priest, as thou power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. 
and thou hast prevailed and thou hast prevail. That's how that man Jacob had the victory. That's why I was not telling Esau. He said I've seen your face like I see the face of an angel and now you cannot hurt me. Nobody will be able to hurt you from tonight. Preservation, the preservation of saints of divine intervention. The Lord will intervene in your life in Jesus name. In Psalm 34 Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 34. We're looking at verse 9. The Lord is coming to your life right now. It's changing everything changeable, everything shakeable is being shaken out of your life right now. And by the time you live here tonight, that thing has happened already. I said it has happened already. All the negative reports you got before about your health and about your place of work and about your wife and about your husband, all those negative reports you got about your children before you leave here tonight, it is changing already in Jesus' name. We're looking at it from Psalm 34 verse 9. It says, So fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them. There's no lack, there's no loss, there's no sorrow for them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight. I said, I'm the one seeking the Lord tonight. And there's this assurance for you and for me. That they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want, shall not lose any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life? Anybody desiring life here tonight? Abundant life here tonight, sufficient life here tonight, long life here to eternal life here tonight. Is this what man is he that desires life and loveth and loveth and loveth and loveth? How many do you love many days? You have them in Jesus' name. He says, and loveth many days that he, he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil. And thy, and thy leaves that the speaking uh, from speaking uh, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Thank God his eyes are upon you. I said his eyes are upon you. And his ears are open unto their cry. Tonight, all your cries the Lord will hear. All your prayers the Lord will hear. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Anybody trying to do evil against your life, the face of the Lord will be against them in Jesus' name. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, the righteous pray, the righteous and they talk to God. And the Lord heareth and, and he delivereth them out of how many troubles? How many troubles? How many troubles? All your troubles you are delivered. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It has happened already in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 37, Psalm 37, I'm reading from verse 28, because of divine intervention. That's how God comes to intervene for you. That's why he is mine. Devil cannot touch you again. He is mine. The evil spirits cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Esau, with his 400 men, cannot touch you anymore. He is mine. Because of that, all those paths of darkness will not be able to touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Psalm 37, verse 28, for the Lord loveth judgment. And forsaketh not his saints, they are preserved forever. You are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and the seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see it. 
thou shalt see it. The Lord will be with you. In the day, in the night, everywhere you are this year, wonderful protection. Secured protection. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, this is your year. I said, this is your year. 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. In verse 17, it says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. The Lord stood with me. If the Lord is standing by you and standing with you, what else do you need? What else do you need? Maybe some men forsake you as to their laws, but the Lord is going to stand by you. And then he says, and strengthened me. That by me the preaching might be fully known. And then he says that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. You are delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's for this year. I said that's for this year. In the night and in the day. The Lord will deliver you from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his everlasting unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. There's an amen in your life this year. Amen. There's a blessing of God upon your life this year. Amen. Preservation. I said preservation, Amen. protection, Amen. and guidance of the Lord. Amen. This year will be that year. Amen. I come to number three now, prosperity. Everybody say prosperity. prosperity. What are you having this year? Prosperity. I said what do you have this year? Prosperity. At the present day? Prosperity. I said this present day? Prosperity. And in the future? Prosperity. From January to December this year? And beyond this year for the rest of your life. All losses are taken away from your life. Every lack is taken away from your life. Living from hand to mouth that is taken away in Jesus name. You'll be head, you'll not be tail. There'll be promotion, there'll not be demotion. There'll be success, there'll not be failure. There'll be victory, there'll not be defeat. We're looking at Genesis chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 11. Genesis chapter 33. We're looking at verse 11. Take, I pray thee, my, breath, my blessing that, that, that is brought to thee because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. And because I have enough. And because I have enough. And because this year I don't confess anything negative anywhere you go you wake up in the morning praise the Lord this is the day the Lord has made I'll rejoice and be glad in you because today I have you know you get to the place of work and they say they are retrenching people and then you say praise the Lord I'm not among the least they are retrenching because today I have enough and then they said you know there is epidemic and this is happening and that is happening and everybody is dying this way and dying this way a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by the left hand side then you say praise the Lord because today I have enough you are going to the market and then they say do you know that you know customers are no more coming because of the price of this and price of that and this one has gone up and this one and the customers are no more coming and then you are spreading all your wares you are going to say you say praise the Lord. I'm going to sell this today. I'm going to sell that today. I'm going to sell that today. Because today I have enough. They say we don't know what is happening. Nobody is, you know, getting pregnant in this street, in this community. Maybe some wicked people are there. They said as long as they're living there in that street, nobody is going to get pregnant. You say, my wife, get ready. I said, wife, get ready. Because today I have enough. The Lord will open the way for you every day of your life this year in Jesus' name. And let's come to Jacob, your senior brother here. I said Jacob is your senior brother here because as everything was changed in his life. Everything is going to be changed for the better in your life. He says, take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee because God has dealt wonderfully, graciously with me and because I have enough. Anybody there? I said anybody there? I, keep, I didn't hear, I only see hand. I, I only see you. I say, say it with your mouth. I have enough. You'll have enough in Jesus' name. 
I want to interview Jacob for a moment. I want to say, how did you come to that point? Show me the way. Show me the way. How did you come to the point you have enough? And Jacob said, I will tell you. Let him tell us now how he came to have enough. If you do what he did, you are going to have enough. I said you are going to have enough. Look at Genesis chapter 28. This is what he did. This is what brought him to have enough. We're told in Genesis chapter 28. And I'm reading there from verse 20. Genesis 28 verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had nothing. That time he had no wife. That time he had no child. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he had no piece of land. And Jacob vowed a vow. That time he didn't have any flock. And Jacob vowed a vow. He had nothing in his son. And when he was at the place of having nothing, no wife, no children, no land, no house, nothing at all, only one stick he had. He was going all the done. He had no companion. He had no friend. But Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. He wasn't even sure at that time of raiment to put on. He wasn't sure at that time of any food he will eat. He said, but if the Lord will be with me while I'm going on this journey and then God will give me food and God will give me clothes to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace then shall the Lord be my God. That's what he did. He said, the Lord will be my God. The Lord will be my God. And so make up your mind. This will say, the Lord will be my God. He will be my healer. He will be my provider. He will be my redeemer. He will be my deliverer. He will be my protector. He will be in front of me. He will be at my back. He will surround me. Underneath me will be the everlasting arms. When I get into trouble, the Lord will be my God. When there's no friend, the Lord will be my God. When all things surround me and I'm confused, the Lord will be my God. On Sunday, I'm going to wake up and go to church because the Lord will be my God. From Monday, I'm going to attend Bible study. The Lord will be my God. And when anything happens, I'm going to be thinking about my God, my God, the Lord will be my God. If you make up your mind, that's how Jacob did it. Then they came to a point, he said, I have enough. Because from the moment, from the day I made the Lord my God, everything turned around in my life. Everything will turn around in your life in Jesus' name. He said, I'm not looking at what I have now, what I don't have, if God will go with me. And then he'll bring me back to my father's house. This God will be my God. In verse 22, and this too which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. He said, it's not only that the Lord will be my God, I'm going to build God an habitation. That thing the Lord is going to provide for me. At this place will be God's house. And then he said, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the taste unto thee. The two things there, number one, three things actually, number one, this God will be my God. You see your God? I said, you see your God, a father which art in heaven, I would be thy name, thy kingdom come. When that kingdom comes in your heart, because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you enter into that kingdom and Jesus becomes your savior and the Holy Ghost your comforter and this God of heaven becomes your heavenly father, that's the first step. And thank God for those who have taken that step. And if you have not taken that step yet tonight, this God will be your God. I said this God will be your God He didn't take Jacob time He just said God you are now my God God you are now my God You are my creator you have become my savior You have become my Lord You become my, Lord, my redeemer And when you make up your mind Jesus Christ died for me He shared his blood for me And from now on Satan will not be my Lord From now on evil speech will not be my Lord From now on occultism will not be my Lord From now on all those Jews will not be my God But Jesus is now my savior That's all it takes That's all it takes I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ This God God will be my Lord. You have taken the first step. Welcome. Welcome into the kingdom. And when you enter the kingdom like that, something else is taking place. Then he said, this stone will be God's house. This, what, what does that mean? Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. You're making up your mind. I'm going to do something. I'm going to provide an habitation for the Lord my God. Look at this in Exodus chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 2. The Lord is my strength. Give me a good amen. Yeah. And it's my song. Another amen. Yeah. 
he is become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. That means that you make your house the house of God. And whatever we cannot do in the house of God, you're not doing that place. Say, this is the house of God. That's what Jacob said. Jacob said, this place where I find myself, it will be God's house. I'm going to make God and habitation. He said, God has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him an habitation. Let me show you one man. This is how the blessing comes in Second Samuel, Second Samuel chapter six. Second Samuel chapter six. And I'm reading there from verse ten. This is how you have the blessings of God, the abundance of God, and this is the year of abundance. Is the year of plenty? Is the year of prosperity? And the year of sufficiency? And the way Jacob did it, he said, "Number one, this God will be my God. Number two, this place where I am will be God's house." Look at Second Samuel chapter six. I'm reading from verse ten. It says, "In verse ten, so David would not." Remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gittite. That's the ark of the Lord that represented the presence of God for the children of Israel. And David took that ark to the house of Obed Edom. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed Edom the Gittite three months and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. You see why God blessed Jacob? Because he said this place will be God's house. You have a house, you have some city room there, some uh, thing, uh, we can make that a church. There can be a church there where the presence of God is every Sunday and every Monday and every Thursday and say this place, the house where I live. This place, the, where I, the place I reside. This place, the place I live lay my head on it's also going to be god's house it's going to be god's habitation it will be, it will happen in jesus name they are telling our leaders to say i'm surrendered like obed edom i'm surrendering my house to be the house of god i'm surrendering my yard to be the habitation of god i'm surrendering my city to be the habitation of god i'm telling you the blessings the lord is going to bring upon your life this year you will not be able to contain in jesus name overflowing overflowing abundance it will run over in your life in jesus name and look at look at romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 maybe from verse 3 it's a great priscilla and aquila my hell pass in christ jesus who have for my life laid down their own names unto whom not only i give thanks but also all the churches of the gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house that's how people become blessed because they do like jacob they said this place where i live will be god's habitation and god's house number one this god will be my god this god is your god i said this god is your god number two your house becomes the house of the house of the house of that will be the house of prayer it will be the house of preaching it will be the house of miracles and wonders it will be the house of revival in jesus name number three jacob said of all that you give me i'm going to give a tense unto thee wonderful i'm going to give a tense unto that man knew how to have the blessings of god abundance of god is that that's why i had sufficiency and prosperity because of divine investments investments we're looking at malachi chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 and i'm reading there from verse 10 malachi chapter 3 we're looking at verse 10 this is how you are going to have the abundance it is coming I said it is coming. Look at verse 10 of Malachi chapter 3. Bring ye all the tithes into, into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and put me now here we says the Lord of hosts. Who is talking here? I said who is talking here? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Praise the Lord. You are the blessed person the Lord is talking to. You are the prospering person the Lord is talking to. You are the protected person the Lord is talking to. You are the man, the woman of abundance the Lord is talking to tonight. And this year, yeah, all that, let me read it to you. Look at verse 10. Verse 10, it says, and probably now, here we say the Lord of us, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, they are going to be open. 
and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's the word enough again, enough. You have enough, you have more than enough. You have more than enough. And then in verse 11, it says, And I will rebuild the devourer for your sakes, and it shall not devour, it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of us, and all the nations of the earth, and all the nations shall call you blessed. All the nations shall call you blessed. Let's personalize it now. All the nations shall call me blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. That's for this year. I said that's for this year. And look at what the Lord wants you to take back home and them every day of this year. This is your inheritance. And this is your portion. Deuteronomy chapter 28. It was Jacob's turn. Now it is your turn. I said, now it is your turn. And shall come to pass, Deuteronomy chapter 28, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God, whose God is this God? I said, whose God is this God? The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city, blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Are you tired? I said, blessed you will be in the city. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy stone. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. And they shall flee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee did I hear an amen there and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thee to give unto thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless 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 all the works of thy hand. And thou shalt learn unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the hedge the head the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only where are they I said where are they sit you down I said where are they you'll be the head you'll not be the tail then say you'll be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou shalt hearken unto the, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Your blessing has begun. I said your blessing has begun. Why don't you just praise the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for a year like this. Thank you for a time like this. A year of abundance. A year of sufficiency. A year of provision. A year of the promises of God. A year when everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. No sickness will stay in your body. 
no calamity will stay in your home, no oppression will stay on your children, no poverty, no lack, no loss. Because today, today, the Lord is calling you to a covenant, a covenant of grace, a covenant of mercy, a covenant of provision, a covenant of supply, of sufficiency. Because this is the year of having enough, the year of having sufficiency, and the year of provision. The Lord is bringing to your life this year. Congrats, congratulations, because the Lord is calling you. It is abundance today. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. This God will be my God. Make your promise and make your vow before the Lord. This God will be my God. Give your life to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm making up my mind. I'm making up my mind. I forsake Satan. I forsake evil spirits. I forsake evil power. I forsake all that juju. I forsake all those works of darkness. This God, this God, this God will be my God. God is calling you to a relationship tonight. You're making up your mind and you're saying, Oh Lord, you'll be my God. Jesus Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. And I surrender my life to the Lord tonight because I'm making a covenant with God. He will be my God. He will be my Savior. He will be my Lord. Great time. Wonderful time. A time of covenant. A time of covenant. A time of covenant. If you're a backslider, come back. Come back. Come back. There's abundance at home. At home with the Lord. Plenty. At home with the Lord protection at home with the lord provision at home with the lord abundance at home with the lord joy at home with the lord come back come back from that wilderness of backsliding i say oh lord here i come this god will be my god this god will be my god this god will be my god come into the kingdom come into the kingdom come into the kingdom Forsake your sin and take Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Jesus is now my Savior. Jesus is now my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my Redeemer. He has taken all my sins away. I surrender. I yield. I give my heart. I give my life unto the lord here tonight this god he'll be my god this god he'll be my god he'll be my sufficiency he'll be my supplier he'll be my savior he is my lord he is my lord he is my lord into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm making him a habitation. I'm making the Lord a habitation. Come and dwell in my heart. Come and live in my heart. Come and live in my heart. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. So I know that heart to the Lord. Come and live in my heart. I'm making God a habitation in my heart. I'm making God a habitation in my life. Come in to stay. Come in to abide. And when he comes in, he drives away all the sin. He drives away all the pollution. Drives away. All those evil residents there, your heart, it drives everything away. Then make up your heart, make up your mind. If you have a house, I'm going to surrender that house for the worship of the Lord. You have an apartment, you have a building, you have a yard, you have a city room. I'm going to surrender, surrender, surrender that apartment. That of a church in the house. And bring the ark of the covenant. The ark of the Lord. Into my house. And bring the presence of God into my house. 
I'm bringing the worship of God into my house. I'm bringing the preaching of the gospel into my house. I'm bringing the prayer meeting into my house. I'm bringing the revival into my house. My house will be called the house of God. My house will be called the house of prayer. My house will be called the house of preaching. My house will be called the house of healing. My house will be called the house of deliverance. My house will be called the house of worship. My house will be God's house. My house will be God's house. My house will be God's house. Bring the worship of the Lord there. And then of all that you will give me, of all that you supply in my life, of all the provision you give unto me, I'm going to give a taste unto thee. That's how Jacob had the divine investment in his life. Promise the Lord, promise the Lord, promise the Lord. Every time I come before the Lord, I bring an offering, I bring a present, I bring my tithe and offering. And then they will multiply that. Then they will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to receive. Abundance for this year, this is how it comes, this is how it comes. Plenty for this year, this is how it comes. Supply, this year, that's how it comes. Of all that the Lord will give me. Of all that the Lord will give me. Of all the increase. Of all the profit that the Lord will give me. I'm going to bring a taste. I'm going to bring a taste, at least a taste, unto the Lord. That there may be meat in my house and probe me now and test me and try me now. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. And then get ready, get ready, get ready. A year of miracles. Get ready. A year of abundance. Get ready. A year of supply. Get ready. A year of divine intervention. Get ready. A year of divine inheritance. Get ready. A year of protection. Get ready. A year of provision. Get ready. A year of signs and wonders. Get ready. A year of healing. Get ready. A year of miracles. A year of the abundance of the Lord upon your life. Revelation. Impartation. Miracles. Signs and wonders. It's coming. It's arrived already. Tell the Lord, change my life and change my destiny. Change my circumstance and change my name. Change my nature. Change everything around me. Around me and within me, above me and beneath me, in front of me and behind me. Change everything. Change everything. And shake everything that is shakeable. That the seas that cannot be shaken may remain. That the seas that cannot be shaken may abide. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tonight is the night of the open door. The, tonight is the night of the open gate. The, tonight is the night of that breakthrough. That breakthrough. That breakthrough in your life is happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. Those sicknesses are going. It's happening now. Those attacks and afflictions are leaving now. It's happening now. Those paths of darkness have been broken now. It's happening right now. All that pain is going now. It's happening right now. That infirmity has been taken away. It's happening right now. That deformity is taken away now. It's happening right now. That brain problem is going. It's happening right now. That stomach problem is going. It's happening right now. The oppression is leaving. It's happening right now. The affliction. The pressure at night. is leaving right now. It's happening right now. Hearing of voices. The stopping voices is happening right now. Barrenness is living right now. Bad luck is living right now. Demonic oppression, all that is living right now. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. A child of mercy. A child of grace. A child of miracle. A child of signs and wonders. It's happening right now. 
It's happening right now. The Lord has come to visit you. The Lord has come to visit you. It's there. It's there. It's there. The miracle is right there. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. That terrible headache that is knocking your head as if they are pounding something in your head. All that is living right now. That shall pain on your in your in your soul, the soul of your foot when you are walking is living right now. It's happening. That broken bone is being joined together right now. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. All the effect of that accident that was still carrying the pain. The pain is living right now. The dimness of your eyes. All that is going right now. All that is going right now. The pain in the neck, all that is going right now. The deformity, all that is going right now. That swelling, all that is going right now. It's happening. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. All the loss in your life. The Lord is bringing everything back. Everything you have lost. Everything you have lost. It's happening right now. All the threats, in, all the threats of the enemy. The Lord is breaking the yoke right now. Yoke's broken. Yoke's broken. The works of the devil destroyed. You stepped on the charm, on charm. And since that time, the heat in the leg, all that heat is going away right now. It's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening right now. Nothing just in your throat. That when you try to swallow, you cannot swallow. All that is going away right now. It's going. It's going, it's going. Nothing you saw in the x-ray. And you said that the spot, that the spot, that the spot. All that is clearing the way right now. Miracle. 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 It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, the joy of the Lord is in your heart right now. Your doors are opened. The gates are opened. Flood of miracle. Floods of healing. Floods of provision. Come into your life and your family right now. Amen. Let's bow the eyes closed. Let's bow the eyes closed. Put down your hands. Thank you very much. God bless you. You've got it already. Let's bow the eyes closed. This God will be your God. And if for the very first time in your life you're saying this God will be my God I'm turning away from myself giving my life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that Jesus will be my Savior he'll be inside me he'll be around me, he'll be before me, he'll be behind me he'll surround me and nothing will be able to touch me from the enemy camp and you say now this God will be my God and you're saying from the depths of your heart that Jesus Christ died for you to take away your sin and then it becomes your Savior to Tonight, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. I have a special prayer for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for you that you're saying, This God will be my God. This God will be my God. No more idol worship, no more sinning, no more adultery, no more fornication, no more drunkenness, no more smoking. This God will be my God. Where are you? Wave that hand at me if you're serious about that. Keep the hand up and just close your eyes and pray in a special prayer for you now. This God will be my God. Can we say that with them? Ah, say it with them. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all the people who have raised up their hands and they say, This God will be my God. I pray, Lord, be their God tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that all the sins they are leaving behind will not attach itself again unto them anymore. You separate them from their sin and you separate their sins from them and you cleanse them, you forgive them, you wash them, you totally take everything away from them in Jesus' name. The condemnation of their sin take it away. Oh Lord, I pray that forgiveness and mercy and grace and love will come into the earth right now in Jesus' name. 
give them, Lord, the assurance that now they are saved. Let the Spirit of the Lord bear witness in their hearts right now. Their sins are taken away in Jesus' name. And give them victory. Give them victory. Give them victory over all their past sins in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the joy of salvation and the peace that comes with salvation and the victory that comes with salvation will come to them right now. Confirm each and every one of them, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Angels rejoice in heaven when sinners come to the Lord. If you will rejoice like angels, you do something different. Amen. Ah, I'm sure you think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. You think that is the limit of the joy of the angels. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Amen. Now, I said now. Now, now. Praise the Lord. This year is a year. Deeper life here. Any deeper life here? Praise the Lord. It is your year. Tears wiped away. Sorrow taken away. Yeah. Regrets taken away. Yeah. All problems taken away. Yeah. Sicknesses taken away. Yeah. Afflictions taken away. Yeah. Bad luck taken away. Yeah. Poverty taken away. Yeah. Now, I told you tonight, you came to open the door. Yeah. You have not just opened the door for your district, you have opened the door for deeper life in this nation. Yeah. And in this continent of Africa. And now we are going to go through. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You don't know that your clapping gets into you know, the recording. Praise the Lord. And you know. Anywhere the tape goes. Anywhere the recording goes. Your clapping goes along with the recording. And your clapping alone can open the door for millions and millions and millions of people. Praise the Lord! You know, I just came to rejoice and celebrate with you tonight. Uh, why don't you just raise up your hand now? You, you don't carry sickness out of this place. Infirmity, you don't carry out of this place. Bad luck, you'll not carry out of this place oppression of the enemy you'll not carry out of this place because now for you the door is open stretch those hands up as as high as you can make it <laughs> wonderful i said wonderful when i say wonderful i mean you are wonderful i mean those hands are wonderful i mean your homes will be wonderful i mean that everything around you will be wonderful this year we're praying now, we're praying now, catch it now, catch it now, it's mine. I said, catch it now, it is yours. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to praise you, we want to glorify you, we want to exalt you, we want to celebrate you. Lord Jesus, how wonderful you are, how marvelous you are. We thank you, Lord, because you have opened the door and you have opened the floodgate for all the people of God who are here now and those who are hearing my voice oh Lord I pray breakthrough yeah. abundance yeah. great supply yeah. unto everyone in Jesus name yeah. Lord I pray that this year will be a year of blessing yeah. a year of abundance yeah. a year of breakthrough yeah. a year of deliverance yeah. a year of healings yeah. a year of miracles a year of signs and wonders a year of joy unlimited confirm it in jesus name oh lord i pray any sickness there from the top of the head to the lowest part in the foot oh lord i pray take it away in jesus name those blind eyes i command you be opened in jesus name 
those dim eyes in Jesus name be cleared in Jesus name those deaf ears I pray the Lord will touch the ears right now and I pray those deaf ears will be opened in Jesus name anything swelling in the swelling in the stomach swelling on the neck swelling at the back I command all that swelling and of near to you get out in Jesus name kidneys that are not functioning come alive in Jesus name Levers that are not functioning come alive in Jesus name in the, your spiritual system your lungs that are not working I pray that the Lord right now will touch you receive your miracle in Jesus name any pain, any infirmity, any kind of sickness in your body from the top to the bottom, I pray the Lord will touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. As you are going out of this place tonight, no sickness will follow you. No infirmity will follow you. No pain will follow you. All that have suffered until this time, I pray right now, it will be cut off from you in Jesus' name. And for those who have people in the hospital, a father, a mother, a wife, a child, a husband, that you have in the hospital, as you are thinking about them right now, I send the power of the Lord after them. Lord, I pray on that hospital bed, instantaneously, miraculously, touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. And those who have anybody in a mental institution, they are insane. And they have mental problem. I pray now, the Lord, send your power right there. And I pray you deliver them from that mental institution in Jesus' name. And those who have any loved one behind the bars in the prison, Lord, I pray, get them out of that place. Give them their freedom in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray that all the blessings your people need to shower upon your people poverty i command you get out of their lives in jesus name those who are jobless i pray this very month your job will come to you poverty will live your life prosperity has come abundant supply has come lord i pray for those who have been looking up to you they want to get married they say this and they say and it's never possible this is a year of multiple marriages in this church in jesus name lord i pray that those who have not been able to make it this year they will make it and those who have married and then for one reason or the other there's not be any children miracle babies or oh, you're right there i command right now I have your miracle baby in jesus name on oh, my sister right there i command have your miracle baby in jesus name our students who are here there's no failure this year there's no failure this year there's no failure this year you will be the head you will not be the tail in jesus name oh lord as your people go out let blessings run after them let miracle run after them let deliverances run after them all the paths of darkness clear away before them in jesus name you turn to the right blessing you turn to the left blessing you go forward blessing everywhere you move around blessing and i pray that when that celebration day comes you will celebrate you will celebrate you will celebrate and your testimony will lead other people into miracles oh lord i just pray as your people go now your miracle power is following our time brother let the joy of the lord be the strength of everyone thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the people of god said and the people of God said, yeah. finally the people of God said, yeah. 